All right, welcome to day five of the advent of code 2020. Um, yeah, nothing new today. I hope the audio is as good as it was yesterday. Um, and let's see, last, last yesterday we helped Santa with his uh, passport issues. But now we have to help him with something else. I don't know. I haven't opened the problem yet. But uh, yeah, let's look it up. Uh, let's just close the window and open up. Let's see here. Uh, adventofcode.com. Five. Right. Binary boarding. Okay, you... Oh no. You dropped my boarding pass. Oh no. All the flight attendants are busy with a flood. I thought we were doing a toboggan. But okay. We're doing a flight. Um, oh no, this is this big white thing here. Let me fix this scene a bit. Um, uh, okay. Well, yeah, okay. Make this bigger. So... Um, yeah, so we have to fix the binary boarding. Okay, quick program, you use your phone's camera scan all the night right boarding passes. Okay. Instead of zones or groups, this only uses binary space partitioning to see people. A seat might be specified like F, B, F, B, B, F, F, R, 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 yeah. F means front, B means back, L means left, and R means right. The first seven characters will either be F or B. These specify exactly one of the 128 rows on the plane numbered 0 to 127. Each letter tells you which half of a region the given city is in. Start with a whole list of rows. The first letter indicates whether the seat is in the front or... Um, oh, right. Now I remember what he did. He took the toboggan to the airport to catch his flight. Let me actually... We actually fix fix one thing is yeah but let's see um so we have to partition them so we could consider the whole range then we go the lower half b means the upper half lower half upper half and then uh left and then r means right okay so we look at the first seven characters so, so those characters so that's how we determine the... So we just binary search the seating space in to find the row. And then... Okay. So the last three characters will be either L, L or R, exactly one of the eight columns on the plane. The same process as above proceeds again, this time with only three steps. L means keep the lower half, R means to keep the upper half. So consider just the last three characters of F, B, F, B, F, L, R. So, so consider the whole range zero through seven. R means take the upper half, keeping columns four to seven. L means take the rolling of half. So, okay, we take the upper half, take the lower half, and we take the R. So we get five. Okay, so the first thing we see here is that this is very much just binary. Um, so F, B, F, F, uh, so we're always just partitioning the range, right? So let's see here. So, okay. So we recode. Okay. So column five, we have a seat ID. Okay. So we get the idea from this. So we have some other boarding passes. So okay, let's, let's look at the test input. Let's create day five. Um, and open day five. We get a new file. Test input. So this is this one. And then we have these seats here. And then the final one. 
Okay, and now let's open up day5.hs. And let's see, let's see what happens. Um, module main where, okay, so the input is going to be, uh, if you want the classic get input function, uh, read file path, IO list of strings, get input, this is just fmap lines over read file. Okay, and main equals uh, do main is IO get input input and to print. And now we run this uh, day five. Uh, so we run GHC uh, day five out of just we want out to be day five and uh, we run day five to get the starting input use the button okay we got the input so let us look at the first input here so okay uh, let's see here fbbfr okay So I have suspicions about this, right? So RLR, uh, uh, so RLR is actually giving us five, right? But we know that uh, RLR, so if you write it in binary, this will be four plus one equals five. So we just convert it to binary, to bits. Second, uh, so this is supposed to be return 44. So I think B is going to be 1. So 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. This is uh, what this is. So it's 2, so it's 4 plus 8. Not plus 16 plus 32, which is 44. So we just turn, we split it at the seventh letter and, and turn it into binary and then reconvert that into integers. Um, I think we have some Haskell stuff in data.bits. Um, let's go. Okay, um, so how do we, how do we go from bit to, um, let me see, let me see, okay, so bit i is available with i bit set and all other bit clear, so, how do I set the bits? Um, let's see. We are going to import data.bits. That's for sure. Import data.bits. Data.bits. And then we are going to go. For each bit, we are going to. So we just want to convert these strings. So, uh, string, uh, two bits. So this is going to take a string and compare a pair of ints. Okay. Two bits equal. So we're going to first, uh, where split at, we're going to split it at the seventh member. Let me see, uh, copy this and you say, let this equal, uh, so split at 7s yes exactly so we say split at 7s so this is going to be row comma column um so we split at so then we get the rows and columns 
and then we just want to map that to bits um, okay how do we how do we just we just want to make finite bit size count trailing um to integer okay can we just convert bits to integers let me see okay so we want to for the row we want to sip We're gonna, so we're gonna say sip. We're gonna sip it with this. F B F B B F F. Um. So we're gonna sip. So we're just gonna sip with the index. Sis. Hey, Frederick. Yeah, we gotta have more Haskell content, right? They say we're lazy, but that's just our programming. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, I think I'm gonna change the color scheme. I think you guys can't really see the chat. Better. Thank you. Yeah, it's Icelandic. Used to look Danish. Uh, but then I got these blue keys and I replaced it. See, this is the other one, because I have two. Uh, so I just like added these blue keys to make it less Danish. I'm sorry, Frederick. You can get this Danish by default work for you, I guess. Anyway, uh, we're gonna sip. Uh, let's just let's just write the function to int. It's gonna take this string and it's gonna return us an int. Let's we're gonna use it here. So we're gonna say to int of a str. So we're gonna apply this to to int stir and we're going to apply it to row and column and we are going to say so I, I'm going to say I'm going to make a zero I think I think that's how I do it zero bits yeah and I don't I've never used this data dot bits before so I'm not quite sure zero bits So zero bits as int. Okay, cool. So I will just go through the bits and I will just set each bit. Um, so I am going to, so I create the list of pairs, right? Sip, sip, uh, uh, zero and then string okay I'm, I'm actually gonna reverse the string and what I'm going to do then is I am going to I'm going to fold defold defold R oh no fold L so I want to say yeah this is the set bit function so I want to fold L so fold L, um, so, okay. So it's gonna start off with the zero bits and we're gonna map it over the list here. Uh, we're gonna map it over this sip and the function here should be, okay, where F. So, okay, so here I have the index and then I have the, so if I have it, if I have F, no, if I have B, so the, the B's here are gonna be the ones, right? So if I have B, then it is set bit I. If it's something else, then it is just id. Uh, this is gonna be F here. And then I want to map to int row and to int column. 
Uh, right here we we uh, into chart into int. Actual type. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. This is this is this has to be a. Then okay. Let's write b. So set bit i b, and this will just be int b, right? Why does it complain about so zip here? This is gonna be giving a list of. Oh, okay. Maybe this needs to be an int. Zip here is gonna give me two ints. Int and char, yeah. And then fold. So it can't match type. Oh, okay. I think I want to fold. R. No, yeah. Okay, I know what it is. I just I have to flip these arguments. That's what I want to do. Okay, a uh, split at 7s. How is it complaining about 2 int row column? Could match your type it with actual type. Okay, all right, so I this stir. Uh, let's see. Let's let's say print out map two bits. Uh, let's let's just run it. Two fifty three. Uh, six seven thirty eight zero. Hmm. Right. I'm also applying it to, I want R's to be. Uh, set bit, I be. I don't know bits. So, this will be two, four. Maybe I wanna start off at one. Let me see. I'm not familiar enough with the data.bits interface. Okay, let's let's do GC. Because the first one here should be should be 44, and then uh, okay, let me see. Set uh, set bit zero. Of, of set set I'm gonna set the first bit on zero. Okay, import data dot bits. What? Uh, what is? Why? Huh? Oh, uh, okay. I just, I did this wrong. Oh. What? Let me see. Hmm. Yeah. Get contents. What does get contents do? Oh, okay. Yeah, but like I, it, compilation takes like one second, so I'm fine with it. Um, okay, so F B B B F F zero one zero zero one one. Uh, so this is, I mean, so what what we want here. It's okay. Can I? So let's see. Import data dot bits. Um, five int eight. Uh, okay. Set a bit. Let me see. Set bit. 
Okay, so set pitch. Huh. Let me see. Bit size five. Eight. And I bit size five. five oh, I already changed this to be one. Let me change this to act to be zero. And then maybe what's. Um. Hmm. How do we get 88 here? Uh, how would we get... Or is it because I'm reversing the stream? So we want the first one here to be 44. And we figured out that, you know, it is... So 0 times 64 plus 32... Okay, let's just, let's just do it, uh, let's just do it old school. No, I want to, I want to do it properly, but I, I just got to figure out this data dot bits. No, I have to figure out this data dot bits interface. Data dot bits. Okay, so. Set bit takes in something that is a bit, set a bit, okay, of zero. And if I set bit number five, if I set bit number one, I want to get two, yeah? If I set bit number zero, I get a one, yeah? Bit number three, I get an eight. Okay. So if I, so, okay, so. This is supposed to be the bit number here. Okay, so a B. Uh, okay, I think I think I'm messing up the something here. So type of full L. So I want to take an integer. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So I have. Okay. I think I think I'm doing it wrong. Right. So it takes in a list of A's. Yeah. So fold L takes in a list of A's. And a function that takes a B and that thing, and then it should set the bit B of I, right? Okay, what if I just set zero here? Ding, 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 ding. So F B Okay, uh, let's print the input and then we map over it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so RLR. Okay, so the, the, the second one is correct, right? For, we get five, and then here we should get seven, seven, four. So it's five, seven, seven, one. Um, I think, okay, what if I... Okay. Yeah, we, we were trying to fix it. We stopped reversing it. Okay, and then we need multiply the row by eight and then add the column. Isn't that just the same as as running two int on the entire thing? Two int string. Yeah, that's the same as running two int on the entire string. Um, okay, so, so, okay, so let's just simplify this then to, we don't actually need this, uh, 
we do we can just run two bits of int uh let's get our input okay wait and what now we so we yeah we will map the bits and get the max uh let me see new file input and the question we want to answer is what is the highest seat id on a boarding pass okay um Day five. I uh, can do max, right? Uh, maximum. Yeah. Okay. And then maximum. Compile it, run it, let's say time here, just to see how quickly it goes. Three milliseconds, nine, seven, eight is our answer. All right, got part one. Woo woo. Yeah, it's just bits. We just it took us a bit of time to figure out uh, the bits interface for but uh, okay, now I think part two will be a bit harder. I mean, this isn't much code, right? Let's see. Let's see what happens. Uh, continue to part two. Okay, so the fasten seatbelt signs have turned off. Time to find your seat. Completely full flight, so your seat should be the only missing boarding pass in your list. However, there's a catch. Some of the seats at the very front and back of the plane don't exist on this aircraft. So they'll be missing from your list as well. Your seat wasn't at the very front or back though. The seats with IDs plus one and minus one from yours will be in your list. Okay, so... Um, so all the seats will be full. Seats with IDs plus one and minus one from yours will be in your list. Okay. So let's see, because I the, the input is like a thousand nine hundred sixty-five inputs. So we can just find the missing one. Um Let's, okay, let's work it. Let's work this. So, let's see. So the maximum will be there. The minimum will be there. Um, so let's see here. Okay, let bits equal, let SIDs. So this is seat IDs equal map. Okay, let's let's just get the input. Get input uh, put map two bits put okay mm, maximum so the max ma, so let's do min and map they are going to be the maximum of seat ids and minimum of seat ids now let's let's print out like print uh, ma minus mi and print length, length of seat ids Oops. Minimum and maximum. Okay, so wait. So we have the 
Uh, how long have I been coding in high school? Um, I guess I started it seriously in like 2015 or 2014, probably. That's when I did my started my master's. Uh, I think I encountered it first in 2014. So, but then then I've been programming in it heavily since yeah for five years or so. Let's yeah. It's been quite a while. Okay. Um, so there are so the difference between the maximum and the minimum. So I I was expecting it to be like one less. Uh, but now we have to figure out which one is not in this list. And let's, let's just print the maximum, maximum and the minimum. Um, print sort, let's uh, sort the seat IDs. Uh, I just want, I'm just curious, this will, this will return like a big, big list. Yeah, so you have all the seed IDs, right? But it starts at 13 and it ends at 978. Um, so we're, we were just supposed to find the one element that's not in this list, right? So... Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Let's say... Just minimum to max. Uh, let's, let's just do set concatenation, import data dot set. I mean, this is like not the most efficient. Yeah, yeah. That's true, but let's just let's just try it. Like set, like we import data dot set as set, and then we do import qualified uh, data dot set as set. And now we say set part from list. Um, and then we do set dot from list of the seat IDs. Print this. Uh, and it's complaining. I think it's complaining about this, probably. Set dot... 727 is not in the list. I mean, we could do this in a more, like, binary search way, but... I think this is... We're doing it in 4 milliseconds, right? So, yeah, I don't think we need to. Let's see. Let's see if the ID is correct. That's the only one that's missing, right? All right. This is a quick one. So, yeah, how did we do it? Well, we, you know, the, I think that the key trick to this one was the fact that we, like, you know, it, it goes into, you know, let's go back to the, Let's go back to the advent calendar. Let's go back and see here. Like it goes, talks about binary space partitioning, la la la, right? But that's just, that's just a fancy word for binary, right? Binary is just a binary space partitioning of the integers. And then because we are and, you know, and then we noticed here, okay, yeah, you know, so, so, I mean, we could have spent a, so I think, yeah, so I, I agree with uh, Balademaye, I don't know how to pronounce that, but, uh, you know, if we had gone into the whole, okay, let's go left, let's go right, let's do binary search, blah, 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 then we would have had an issue, right? We would have had a lot of stuff to write, right? But um, we don't actually need because so, like, and then we like we just figure out that it's just the bits, right? And then we just find the bits, and then they're just literally asking about the bit. And I think the key insight was like, okay, wait, RLR is 
5, right? So then like, okay, but 101 is also 5 in binary, right? So yeah, I think this is just like the easiest one so far. I mean, we, we didn't spend almost any time on like the actual issue this time around. We spent almost all of our time just trying to figure out how data.bits work. Um, and now I know how it works, but I think, but it's cool. Like you can, you can just treat numbers as integers or ints or like bits and just set bits. Um, and that, yeah, took a bit of work, but I think we could even like do this in a one-liner, you know? Anyway, that, uh, that was fun. Um, yeah, so I guess it was a short one today, which is good, I think. Uh, we all have our Saturday to check out. And uh, yeah, you can catch the episodes so far on YouTube. Um, I think there's a... I don't have a link on my channel. I should probably put a link, but you know, these are gonna be on YouTube. Um, the previous ones are already there. And uh, yeah, but you know, I think, I think, I think Balademaga is correct in the sense that, I mean, I don't think he is correct in the sense that, I mean, you don't need clever algorithms. You just need to figure the trick to the issue problem, right? You don't actually need to go, okay, we need to implement super efficient binary trees here to do the partitioning, right? We just, just go to bits, go back from bits, that's all. Anyway, yeah, that was quick today. And uh, yeah, yeah, procedural. Yeah, I mean, that is true. I, I especially like, I especially last year, we had this whole uh, virtual machine thing we had to implement, right? And then we wrote code for that. And that was like a virtual, that was like a, I mean, it wasn't a functional, functional virtual machine, right? It was a, like it was a, it was a Turing machine, right? It was an imperative, you know, it, it operated on symbols and had instructions, right? And then we had to like simulate that in a functional language, which, which meant a lot of, uh, array operations. But I, I mean, I, I think I was, I was a very proud of my solution that year. I probably have it somewhere with like GitHub, treat low, advent of code. Uh, let's see. Uh, these are, these are so, this is so bad at, like it's not Google. Let's see here, if Google finds my GitHub repository. No, it just literally ignored. It. Um, you can see all my repositories. What did I call it? AO, AOC 2019. Yeah, here we have the code for last year, right? Uh, I lasted nine days. And then, you know, this was the like machine we had to write. You know, we had these operations. Uh, you know, I, w I had to use I used states and then we had these frozen state arrays. Um, and then it's all read mem, write mem, read mem, write mem, you know. Uh, and it was super slow when I used lists, but then I, I, I went into these unsigned arrays in the state monad and they are, they are just optimized so hard by GHC. Like this is, cause you know, you need to do this a lot, right? You need to have arrays and operate on them. And this is even while, yeah, yeah, I think it's, un, yeah, it's unboxed array. Yeah, sorry, it's not, it's not unsigned. It has signed integers, but yeah. And uh, this was like very fast, but you know, we, we did have to deal with a bunch of, of these state issues, right? Right, ST refs, you know, thaw. Uh, we had to thaw the. So we, I mean, so we we initially always like took the inputs. We initialized this array, 
and we modified, we wrote ST refs. Uh, I had thaw somewhere here, right? Thaw. Yeah, we thought we thawed the. So it's like, and it was it was a bunch of. Uh, it was a bunch of it was a bunch of work to get it working initially. And uh, yeah, it, it is a bit hard to get started. I I don't disagree, I guess. Um, but it's also like, it's a new way of thinking, you know, it's a new language, you know, whereas I, you know, C and Java and JavaScript and all of those, they're essentially, it's essentially, I, I want to say Algol or something like that. Like it's, it's all the same language, except there are like, they're different dialects, right? And then there are, there's, there's a bunch of differences, of course, like, you know, Java runs on the JVM. But, you know, Java runs on the JVM and then it has some package manager stuff like an object. I mean, it has I mean, it has a, a lot of stuff built in, but it, it's still it's still just essentially C. You know, it's still just yeah, it's, it's still just a, a dialect of C with a bunch of stuff added in def by default, right? But uh, yeah, but with, with Haskell and functional programming languages, you think about things differently, right? So, so like here, you know, instead of, you know, iterating over the string and walking one step, check, turn it a bit, walk next step, check, turn to a bit. Like instead of saying, let's do this, this, and this, we thought, what is the transformation we're trying to do here, right? So, so we, we, we like, we, 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 we change it to be a, like a flow of data throughout stuff and that kind of compositional thinking like Balade Maria is talking about like that that helps you a lot and the cool thing about Haskell on GHC especially like it it, it optimizes all of these so it, it it fuses things and then once you get into that groove of thinking about things this way um, so instead of thinking about recipes and like to do this step, do the next step, and so on. You're thinking about you're thinking about data flow, essentially. And this is kind of it's data flow programming. You're thinking how does the data flow through my app? And it it is it is a bit like the difference between NoSQL and SQL um, in some sense, right? Where like in NoSQL. You construct a database in such a way that you know you're thinking about what are the operations I'm going to apply to it. You know, so how am I going to sort the table? Well, what operations am I going to run on it? And that that changes how you think about databases because then you're thinking about not just how the data relates to each other, but you're thinking about how how will things flow? Like, what am I going to be querying, right? And that's why that's why you get like very very fast document databases because they are structured in such a way that you're thinking about the queries you're going to be making. And uh, so, how does this relate to function? Well, that like when I when I d dug into document databases, I got a new feel for how to work with data in databases you know so instead of just saying okay that's it's very academic you know you put in the er diagram and you make all these relations and you say this one relates to this and this one this one has to be a foreign king this one and you kind of set up the whole system and then once you have to run some queries that's you know you you have to hope that the query optimizer in postgres uh, works a lot, works very well, right? But in document databases, you're thinking about the operation from the start. So you're thinking like, what what's the index? Well, what are the operations I'm going to be applying? So yeah, and uh, yeah, so that's all for today. I'm going to, I have to get back to work actually. You do some research and teaching and uh, stuff like that. But I will see you all tomorrow at the same time, six o'clock European time, five o'clock Icelandic time, and whatever time it is in the US right now. I think I think it's noon. 
No, no, it's not new. I mean, it's, okay, it also depends on where you are in the US, right? Anyway, if you're checking out the YouTube, um, you know, make sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to say, right? Uh, uh, because, you know, then I I know what what's like if I'm doing, yeah, like just like, because I, I, want, I want feedback, right? Because like in the past few days, my sound was off, but now I fixed that. Um, I changed where the keyboard cam is. I think I really like the keyboard cam. It's mostly so I can get away with having a super loud keyboard. But yeah, the music could be a touch lower. That's that's true. I will, I will change it right now. Oh yeah, it's higher than it used to be. But yeah. Anyway, thanks a lot and see you tomorrow for day six of the Admin of Code. All right, bye-bye.